Hello and welcome back. I'm Nick and I help run Camp Zufari here at the Houston Zoo. We're excited to bring the zoo to you with Camp Zufari TV. This week, we're taking you on an exclusive adventure, a zoofari, if you will, through the zoo's newest upcoming exhibits, South America's Pantanal. South America's what? Pantanal? Never heard of it. That's okay. Pantanal is a Portuguese word meaning wetland. The Pantanal is the world's largest tropical wetland area, and it's roughly one-fourth the size of Texas. Home to South America's largest concentration of wildlife, the Pantanal provides homes to amazing creatures like jaguars, giant river otters, giant anteaters, tapirs and capybaras, anacondas, and a beautiful array of birds. To make you feel like you're really there, the zoo's gone to great lengths. Whether it's listening to the sounds of animals in the environment, recorded by our zoo staff on their last conservation trip to the region, or the hundreds and hundreds of individual plants rooted by our horticulture team. Not to be outdone, our design team has fabricated over 1,200 feet of roots and vines. That's the same height as the Empire State Building. With so much to explore, let's get started. But since we're going through an active construction site, I've got my safety vest and hard hat on. Let's go! As you enter South America's Pantanal, you'll see a set of large rustic buildings set on piers, just like the one I was standing on. These buildings, built to resemble the eco-lodges found along rivers and streams throughout the northern Pantanal, will house a variety of animals. An eco-lodge is just a hotel where tourists can stay and a portion of their money goes to help support local wildlife. Walking under the large wooden deck, the first animals you'll encounter are our howler monkeys. Named for the loud calls they can make, our howler monkeys are dimorphic, which is just a fancy word that means the boys and the girls are two different colors. If you're visiting our howler monkeys, the males will be black and our females will be brown. These guys rarely come down from the treetops and will use their long prehensile tail to grab onto limbs for added security as they climb across the branches. Living with the howler monkeys in this mixed species exhibit are some small, bright golden lion tamarins. These noisy little monkeys weigh less than a pound, but they have more than 40 different calls they use to communicate with one another. Golden lion tamarins are also a conservation success story. At one point in time, they were near extinction in Brazil, but thanks to the efforts of different organizations and zoos, they now have a thriving population in the wild. On the ground down below the monkeys, you'll find the red-rumped agouti. This unusual rodent has large front teeth which are perfect for cracking through Brazil nuts. They can also jump up to six feet in the air. That means they could jump from the ground up on top of one of my shoulders. The agouti are the cleanup crews of the forest. Monkeys are messy eaters and the agouti are perfectly happy to come along and eat any of the fruits and seeds the monkeys drop. On the other side of the path, and right behind me, giant river otters will splash and play in a large streamside pool. These otters are huge, weighing as much as some of you all and being as long as I am tall, this is the largest species of freshwater otter in the world. This is also the first time that Houston Zoo guests will have an opportunity to see these types of otters. As they swim and play along the stream bank, you'll also be able to see schools of big tropical fish, stingrays, and turtles as they swim in a sheltered cove. Welcome back. Let's check your animal knowledge. More quizzes to come! Next on our journey through South America's Pantanal, we'll encounter the heaviest snake in the world, the green anaconda, as it lies in wait in the water below the howler monkeys. 
My favorite part of this exhibit is the tunnel that guests can crawl through below the waterline so you can see the snake from below. As you exit that tunnel, you'll come across dry stream beds where you'll find poison dart frogs among the greenery, an emerald tree boa up in the branches, and fist-sized smoky jungle frogs peering out from their shallow pools. As you head out from under the Eco Lodge, you'll encounter a shaded pavilion where you can catch impromptu appearances from zoo staff and our South American animal ambassadors. One day it might be a boa, another a tegu or a sloth, or even a red-footed tortoise or tamandua. As you come around the bend, you'll be met with the bright, bold, and beautiful colors of two of South America's rarest birds, the blue-throated macaw and the blue-billed curacao. This large, mainly black species is the only curacao with a distinctive blue sear, the spot at the base of its upper bill. Blue-throated macaws have a bright yellow breast, blue wings, and a distinctive blue collar. The Houston Zoo is one of the few zoos in the United States that breed these endangered birds, and we work with our colleagues in South America to save their counterparts in the wild. Let's check your animal knowledge. As you walk along the forest trail, you may feel like you're being watched from the sides or up above, and there's a good chance you are. Houston Jaguars Tesoro and Maya will have plenty of vantage points in their new exhibit to watch guests as they move along the path, either from in their main habitat or in their fully enclosed jaguar bridge. Sculpted by craftsmen to look like a fallen tree, this jaguar highway will provide access into the habitat from their behind the scenes area. On some days, Tesoro Maya may even perch up there to watch guests as they move below the walkway. Maya is from New Jersey and she came to the Houston Zoo in 2015. She's an independent cat that likes to spend most of her days undisturbed. Maya is also one of the smartest cats at the zoo and she tries to play tricks on her zookeepers in order to get the best treats possible. One of her favorite things to receive as enrichment are different smells from around the zoo. Whether it's sand from the rhino habitat or poop from our elephant herd, Maya loves to roll around in it and cover herself with those scents. Tesoro came to the Houston Zoo in 2016 from the Living Desert Zoo and Gardens in California. His name means treasure in Spanish, and he truly is a treasure. He's a high energy cat that loves enrichment, especially things he can shred, like paper. According to his zookeepers, he acts silly most of the time, He's known to talk back and forth with his keepers and will even wiggle on his back when he gets really excited. Time for another quiz. watching for more quizzes. We're ready. We're ready. We're ready. We're ready. We're ready. We're ready. Are you? There's so much to see and explore in this new area. The Houston Zoo has been partnered with Brazilian wildlife conservationists since 2004. Some of the projects we assist in are the Giant Armadillo Project and the Giant Anteater and Highway Project. These projects all focus on research, education, and threat reduction to help Brazilians save their native species. Are you looking for ways that you can help save native species here in Houston and in Texas? The easiest way you can help is to come and visit us here at the Houston Zoo. Every time you visit the Houston Zoo, 
you're helping us save animals right here in Texas, as well as around the globe. And if you want to be a little more active in saving animals in your neighborhood, just take a look at any of the Take Action activities we've already talked about this season. As the vista opens, you'll see across the expanse of flooded grassland home of capybaras, tapirs, giant anteaters, and some birds like rays, coarse swans, and crested screamers. You'll get to see how all of these species coexist in their native habitats. Let's take a look at the world's largest rodent, the capybara. Meaning master of grasses, capybara are herbivores, and they eat a variety of aquatic plants and grasses. Though they can move around really well on land, they're equally at home in the water, and they're excellent swimmers. They're so excellent, in fact, they can stay underwater for up to five minutes at a time. How long can you hold your breath? Their bodies contain a large amount of fatty tissue, which gives them a neutral buoyancy in the water. This means they don't float or sink. Capybaras can swim with their nostrils, eyes, and rounded ears just above the surface of the water, since they're so high up on their heads. Houston Zoo resident tapirs Molly, Noah, and their daughter Frida can be seen exploring their grassland habitat alongside the capybaras. And like capybaras, tapirs are very agile on land and also excellent swimmers. They can navigate steep slopes with ease and they use their prehensile nose as a snorkel in the water. Tapirs depend on their brown fur for camouflage and their large size for protection against predators. At night, they blend in with leafy shrubs and during the day, they resemble large, stationary objects like rocks. Baby tapirs, though, look more like watermelons with legs. Since they can't rely on their large size to keep them safe, they use a variety of stripes and spots amongst their dark fur to blend into their surroundings. It's not until they're about six months old that they start to grow out that darker fur and look more like mom and dad. Continuing the tour, massive termite mounds dot the landscape and one's even been cut away so you can see how an anteater uses its long tongue to scoop up termites and ants. Since anteaters don't have teeth, once they scoop up those bugs with their long sticky tongue, they have to crush them against the roof of their mouth in order to chew their food. Just like Southeast Texas, the Pantanal is hot, flat, and wet, with lots of cowboys and cattle ranging on this largely privately controlled landscape. Let's check your animal knowledge. While you won't see giant armadillos here at the Houston Zoo, you will see their life-size burrows. Giant armadillos dig burrows, just like this one, where they'll live in for a few days before they move on to another area. Once they're gone, lots of other species will use those burrows as their own homes, either to forage for food or to use the freshly dug soil. So far, over 70 different species have been documented using giant armadillo burrows. While they're the largest armadillo in the world, the giant armadillo is very hard to spot. Just like the nine-banded armadillo here in Texas, or Millie, the three-banded armadillo we met earlier this season, giant armadillos only come out at night. Because of this, researchers are placing cameras around their burrows so we can better understand what these animals need to survive. With enough information, we can help protect these species in the wild. At the Houston Zoo, you'll be able to get up close to those burrows and discover sculptures of other animals that make use of those spaces. Time for another quiz. Rounding out your visit will be two aviaries featuring birds from the wetland and savanna habitats. In the savanna aviary, you'll actually be able to walk through and be amazed as beautiful birds fly above you and perch on the branches nearby. Guests will be able to see a variety of species, 
including boat-billed herons, Ganon toucanets, wattled curassows, and loud green oropendolas. The oropendola weaves a large teardrop-shaped nest that dangles from tree branches, safe above the heads of any predators. Speaking of predators, I want to introduce you to one more friend. This is Brutus, the North American alligator. While you won't find alligators down in the Pantanal in South America, they share a lot of similarities with the Pantanal native, the caiman. Just like the caiman, alligators are excellent hunters, relying on stealth to capture their food. As they lie and float in the water, with just their eyes and nose sticking up above the surface, they'll use their powerful tail to slowly swim forward. And if any prey gets too close, snap, a quick meal. For caiman and alligator both, being a reptile means that they need to use the sun to stay warm. Alligators and caimans have these large scales on their back, covering bony plates called osteoderms. While they're swimming, these osteoderms work like solar panels, bouncing the heat from the sun back and forth across their body. Now, while you would think it'd be dangerous to have a fierce predator like an alligator or a caiman around, we found that a lot of birds actually prefer it. For some of the birds that nest up in the treetops, having an alligator or caiman is a great way to make sure their eggs stay safe as well. But how? Alligators and caimans both make excellent parents, and the mothers will build huge nests on the ground and then patrol them to protect them from any predators. While they're patrolling their own nests, it means that these alligators and caimans are also keeping predators away from some of those bird nests. In South America, it means that those nests are safe from animals like the coati, while here in the United States, those nests are safe from animals like raccoons. Who knew it'd be so helpful to have a fierce predator nearby? Well, that does it for this season's adventures on Camp Zufari TV. We hope you've had fun, learned a little bit about animals, and how you can help us save them in the wild. Don't forget, you can rewatch any of this season's previous episodes on the zoo's website or on YouTube. Until next time. Hi, I'm Lee Emke, the President and CEO of the Houston Zoo. After more than two months of being closed, we are ready and excited to welcome you back to reconnect with the animals you know and love. To ensure the health and safety of you, your family, and our animals, here are a few of the modifications you can expect during your next visit. The Houston Zoo is now accepting advanced reservations online only for all visitors and zoo members at HoustonZoo.org. For the health and safety of our guests, staff, and animals, and to ensure adequate social distancing, a limited number of timed tickets will be available each day and only available online at HoustonZoo.org. Pick the day and time you'd like to visit, and you will receive an electronic ticket that can be scanned by one of our team members when you arrive. Once inside, guests will follow a modified one-way path through the zoo to see many of their favorite animals in outdoor wildlife habitats, including elephants, rhinos, gorillas, lions, and many more. Guests will not have access to indoor animal exhibits or high-touch areas of the zoo. Some sit-down restaurants are open at limited capacity, and food and beverages are available for purchase at multiple locations, all food and beverage locations are credit card only. All zoo staff are required to wear masks while working, and in accordance with new Harris County orders, all guests 10 years and older are required to wear masks. Hand sanitizer stations are positioned at the entrance and exit and along the path, including restrooms and food locations. Zoo staff will disinfect all high-touch surfaces, including vending machines, tables, chairs, and more. For more detailed information and to reserve your ticket, visit HoustonZoo.org.